hỏi thêm right I wasn't gonna do this today I really wasn't but I watched this what I'm gonna show you today and what we're gonna look at I watched it the other day I thought you know I'm not gonna, I can't be asked with that family I can't right and all I did I put a comment up saying if they had where was their um, sympathy? Uh, where was that when it came to the mother? You know what I mean? They did everything for the fa uh, for this guy, but nothing for the mother. They wouldn't let the mother buy the child. Anyway, I put it in another way. Put it words get another way. And this woman comes to them. She comes. They've got their reason for not letting mm. her buy. Let the mother buy her. Well, with that, a lot of other people was coming through and commenting, like, what? You know what I mean? And um, then she replied and said, uh, I put up two paragraphs, but they, they uh, deleted it. So I went back and went, give us a shortened version then. You know what I mean? And she hasn't got back to me yet on that. And he kind of like peed me off because I thought, how can you be? I know they're the grandparents, but they're at fault. They chose to let this. I, why do they make me have to say these words? This foul creature need in onto their property, into their home. You know what I mean? They chose to do it. They didn't do no checks on this guy. If they had, they'd have found what all us YouTubers have found, right? They'd have seen is okay, we're gonna be on the um, registry, but just looking at his uh, criminal background would have been enough to say, hold on, hold on there, man. You're not staying here. You know what I mean? You do drugs, you've done this, you've done that. You know, sorry, can't have that around my granddaughter. But they didn't. And I think they're just saying they did a background check. Right? She covered with her own backs. Really. They didn't do no checks because they got found out straight away they had. Just punch his name in on Google. And he's the face of the SO. You know what I mean? But they didn't do no checks. And this video, I couldn't even watch it all. I couldn't. I couldn't watch it all. But when this woman kept backing this family up, I thought, no, that's it. I'm not having this. No. I'm going alive. And I even put a comment up saying, I wasn't going to do this, but I will now. I'll do a live. Right? Mm. Hoping I'll get some reaction off her. But, but I haven't, and I've got my emails open. Right, I've got my email open in case anything comes up. But she's not got back to me. So, nope, you know, when I do this live, the truth, she says, the truth will come out. But well, tell us then. If the mother was that bad, tell us. So then we, can, we can't find nothing on the mother. We cannot find a single thing on the mother. When it first came out, it said that the mother was on drugs and all this lot. The mother wasn't on drugs. The mother had custody of her daughter. But then it went to court, and because she hadn't got the money to pay for these lawyers, where the grandparents here on this video had, then we did it so that the father got custody. Right? Huh? And made her out to be such a bad mother, and she wasn't. I, I'm sure to hell there's no way this mother 
what you had a conflicted, druggy, junky, living either on or in her property, not by her daughter, she was. So I'm really just peed off. No, I don't know the age of grandma. Yeah, they said background checks are very, are way expensive. If you do it in a certain way, they can be, right? But like I said, why didn't they go and check with the police? Right? Just go to your lo the local police station and say, um, there's this guy who's, we know he's been in prison and he's homeless and we'd like to give him somewhere to live. But can you tell us if he's safe to have on, around children? Now, they couldn't actually say, well, no, you can't have this guy around children because of this. But they the words are getting away. I just said, sort of, like, I wouldn't advise him as far as you can have him on your property. You know what I mean? I couldn't watch it, MJ. I really couldn't watch it all. I thought, okay, I'm going to watch this. But then I couldn't get my head up. I was like vomiting in my mouth, sort of thing. I felt that bad. It was horrendous. I had to stop it. I had to stop watching it because it, they're just doing the blind game. So. But they just gone online and done a Google background check on him. Google check on him. It's pulled up his record. They're saying he didn't tell us the whole truth. Well, why well, didn't you get find the truth out then? This is your, pardon me, this is your granddaughter you, he's going to be around. Right? Now, I didn't realise that the grandfather... I just thought it was the grandmother, the husband, or uh, the father, the daughter living there. Yeah, I can see that. But like you said, it's no excuse though. You know what I mean? Everyone wants to help everyone. Uh, years ago, right? No word of a lie. Years ago, I was living in Scotland at the time. My son made friends with this lad, right? And he was homeless. So I said, Look, he wasn't. As far as my son knew, you now my son knew him for a few months, right? As far as my son knew, he wasn't on drugs. He never used drugs around me. He never used drugs when he. At any time, because you, you can tell uh, someone who uses drugs, you really can. Where I live, it's, <laughs> I laugh, I have a laugh sometimes, because you see them look, scurrily, scurrying along the road, their eyes are popping out the head, because I get, when I get to the, wherever they're going to get their next fix from. Yeah, I was like that, and I gave this like a chance, and I must admit, I didn't have young children at the time. My children were like um, in the twenties. No, yeah, my daughter was about twenty at the time, so my son was being about twenty-two. Right, I didn't do no background checks on this lad, but I can assure you. If I'd have had young children in my home, I wouldn't have even, that thought of having him stay at mine would not have even come into my head. No, it wouldn't have. Not with young children. Right? Like I can't know my daughter, if, if that lady tried anything with her, she'd just kick the crap out of him. You know what I mean? She wouldn't have stood for it. But anyway, he just got up one morning, said he was going somewhere, and he never come back. I thought, okay, fair enough. 
He never gave me any money. I had no money for me, right? Because at the time, because he was homeless, he didn't have no fixed address. But in the UK, I don't know what it's like in England, but up in Scotland, you have to have a fixed, like a you know, postal address to be able to claim uh, universal credit, which is the help you get off the government, right? So you have to have a postal address. So we had no postal address, so we wasn't getting any money that way. And so I said, well, now use my, you've got this postal address, you can use this, right? And he got his money sorted out, and I never took a penny off him. Never took a penny off him. Yet he, I fed him, right? Okay, he didn't have a bed because I didn't have a spare bed. He slept on my sofa, right? And um, I fed him. He, he used my all my amenities, my gas, my electric, my internet, uh, everything. Never had a penny off him. And I, I still wouldn't expect it now. If you come knocking on my door today and say, hey, I go, no, it's all right. I'm glad to see you back up on your feet, you know what I mean? So, well, if I had young children in my house, I don't know, that wouldn't have even come into my door, into my head. So, please, before we go any further, if you're on Twitter and you're watching this, please hit the like button. I really appreciate that. And please, if you're on YouTube, hit that like button. Because you're going to love this. You really are. All right, I'm, I'm going to find it now. Where is he? Oh, God. Oh. All right, because it's just unbelievable. It's a blind game, but we still haven't heard from the father. Still have not heard from the father. So, so I'm trying to find it again now. He'd have it earlier, and now it's gone again. Right, I've got it. All right. It's only eleven minutes and twenty two seconds. But believe me, I take longer than eleven minutes twenty two seconds to get through this because I will be stopping boom 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 every time we hit a flipping red flag. It's so annoying, these two are. Exactly. Did they do one on him? Because he was there as well, wasn't he? So, they didn't do no checks on anyone, I swear. I know. And they're just really, ooh. And well, that was it. That's what was sort of comment I put. If, like, I'll stop it when it gets to that point when what really got my back up. Now, there was other parts as well before then. But by then, I've had literally enough of their BS. So I stopped the video and I put a comment. And I'll stop it again when it gets there. Yeah, it, it was just as bad. And those two guys were around their 11 year old daughter. Right. We'll get on to this because, as I said, I wasn't going on here. 
well, the, the story uh, is interesting because as a painter, and she was even learning to tattoo, uh, she loved all colors. But because grandma loved purple, she kept telling me, you know, purple, my favorite color too. And it's her father's favorite. And who the hell is going to let an 11 year old learn to tattoo at 11 years old? And whose body was she doing that tattoo on? Lot and poor could have asked a lot better questions. A lot more. You find a lot of these reporters say they don't ask the questions they should be asking. You know what I mean? Anyway, but that's all I wanted to do is stop it there because why who here would let a child tattoo? Very color. So it became a symbol uh, of who she was. Uh, the unity of our family. You know, we, it was a common, common ground to stand on. You talk about, um, you talk about, about her dad, you know, son. You know, he's not here today. It's still a little bit too hard for him, right? I mean, how is he doing through all of this? It's devastating. You know, you lose your oldest child to something like this. Losing your child in the first place is it's awful. And, and it tears some of his little his son is looking for constantly looking for his big sister. Nobody stops to think about the trauma people are causing him. Causing my son, causing my grandson. Everybody wants to point the finger at him. And this was nothing. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. They've got a grandson living there as well. I didn't know that. I, I see, I did say someone coming. Uh, you've got your grandson living there, you should have... Hold on, I've just got to go and kill my cat. Hold on. Oh my god. They keep jumping up on my TV, you need... Anyway, I didn't know they had a grandson living there as well. That's even worse, you've got two grandkids but living there. And you let someone like him buy them. Oh my lord he did I was the one that made the decision to let him move into that camper hear that she admitted it she's the one who made the decision to let him move in she's at fault you woman you're at fault you let that vile piece of oh around your grandkids you went on holidays with him you went on guys out with him, with your grandkids. You're sick. I was the one that thought I was doing the right thing. And you think my son would blame me for it, but he doesn't. He knows it. He knows he's the monster. He knows who the monster is. Yeah, and he he lives with us. He's struggling. He works on tugboats down in Houston. Uh, but it was a joint effort to raise Audrey. Between it, uh, in this video, you'll see a camper van at the back or a car van or something. Is that the one? That piece of that mother ever. I'd like to say the proper word, but I can't. Is that the one he used to live in? Watch. Between Joshua, Tabby, and his sister, Julie. Uh, the three of them work together, and the result is what everybody sees. Uh, she was 
she was just so happy. She was learning so much. She was looking forward to her life. She was excited to go, excited but scared she was going to start junior high. She just, she'll never get. Did it surprise you at all that Audrey captivated the country like she did? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, she was a little girl. She had her faults. She she stood in the corner, but she took her, her, her punishment, but she learned from it. But above that, she would bounce back and show her love even more. And you stood her in the corner because she was naughty. Okay. I don't believe in that, but fair enough. Right? But what about that file of pieces? Right? That mother effer. You let him live in the flipping camper. You let him come in your home. Between helping around the family and helping like VFW. A friend of hers worked there serving food food at the VFW. She constantly asked, could she go and help volunteer? She couldn't work, but she could volunteer and she'd go dance with the, the older veterans and their wives. Exactly, NG. Why is that something that needs to be said? Why do you need to tell them, oh, she took her punishment, she's dug in the corner? You don't need to tell us that. What we want to hear is the truth. If you just, if these parents, grandparents just took, dug up and said, okay, okay, I'm, we're to blame. We didn't do the full checks on this guy. We took him for his word. It's our fault. At all, all the way, our fault, right? But they don't, they don't, and you'll hear more as the interview goes on. Wow, that's sick. And she was learning to, to two step and four step and square dance and. Yeah, line well, dance and you know they, they were just amazed by it i guess that was an indication but Sorry, my internet is playing up. far beyond that we we couldn't imagine how much her story would catch on exactly mg vigil in this i think that that story happens in many neighborhoods with many children but it happened to her and we've just lost a valuable citizen of polk county what is one of your favorite memories with what it happened to her right now they were living in the house together yeah, the grandparents, my, um, Audrey, and their other grandson was living in that house, and their son, when he was at home, yeah? Now, I'm sorry, but this was a, uh, an overnight thing. They have not ever, never, ever, he been planning this for a while, right? Now, the night before she went missing, he'd been texting the mother. Right? I've got the text somewhere, in my photo somewhere. So, right? He was texting her. And... What in the world were salad did he just say? I'll tell you what, I'm going to go back. I'm just going to go back because I've probably missed it myself. Hold on. Let's go. And there's, 
I don't think she's. Come on, teammates. Individual in this. I think that that story happens in many neighborhoods with many children. And it's level citizen folk. What is one of your favorite memories? You're on about that where he said this happens, like he sort of like says it happens everywhere, and they've just lost the most valuable folk county member. Um, yeah, she could have been, she could have grown up to be such a, such a wonderful young girl. And you just talk about it as a, oh, well, it happens in all these cases, all these states and counties and whatever. It just so happened to, it happened to us as well. Yeah, no bother, no worries. Yeah. Exactly. They're not coming across this very good at all. And I can understand why the father won't do an interview. Because he will, he will get ripped to bits. You might as well, it's like throwing him in, putting him on a YouTube interview. Right? Putting the father on as in, in an interview. You might as well just get the father and throw him in a sea sharks. Because we will rip him to bits. Because we were, that would be one interview. I think it would crash the internet because everyone would be grabbing to see that interview. Everyone would go on and see that interview. I would even stay up to watch that interview if it was late at night. You know what I mean? Because we'd be sitting there watching it with our notes. And you know what I mean, MG? You get your notepad and you get that pencil and you'll go in and you what you you literally doing the red flags you spotted all of the wrong things is it didn't everything he says is going to be a blind game again he's going to be like his grand his parents he's going to blame the fact that the police failed yes the police have put their hands up the police have said they failed they dropped the ball They've admitted to it. What about these parents here admitting to it that they dropped the ball? So you're blaming everyone else. Sorry, I'm just getting so frustrated. With Audrey. Oh, there's so many. I think my favorite is that she She was always there. I would come home from work and she'd be like, Grandma, do your feet hurt? Like just random things that normal kids wouldn't see. And and she just, just helped me, you know? Grandma, your feet hurt? Well, let me massage your feet. You know what? This grandma here, she reminds me of another grandma. And anyone on YouTube will know when I say Summer Moon Utah Wows. Her grandma. Grandis. She reminds me of her. Now I'm wondering, did uh, Audrey just offer to do her feet or did her grandpa on oh, my feet are hurting me? Audrey, come and rub my feet for me. No, we're not hearing about who she was as a person, well, what she did, how, or how she had, yaga, yaga, like that was who, you know what I mean? All I said was at the beginning was, they do go into how she loved her animals, right? And that all the neighbours knew her, and how they brought her a bike to go to the bus stop on and things like that, right? Now, if my child had to walk that far to a bus stop where they needed a bike, 
I, I think I'd be taking them myself. Even if I had to walk to the bus stop, I'd be walking up there with them. Well, actually, I used to walk both my kids to school every morning and every night. And it was only when my son started senior school that I stopped walking into the bus stop because he was going with his parents as well. He was 11 years old, writing on his mama, being by the side of him. Right? But my daughter was still nine. And I used to walk her to school every day, pick her up and walk her back. And it was in the last year, it was when she was in year six, it was the, she was in the last term before the summer holidays. And I think it was about, what, two weeks before the broke up for the summer holidays? Because she asked me before and I said no. And she said to me, Mom, can I walk to school in the morning? I said, not on your own, you know. No. She said, no, no. Um, I can't think of a friend's name now. And she knew this girl from, from day one. So she went to school with this girl from day one. I knew her parents. I trusted her parents and everything. Right. And uh, so her friend would call for her in the morning. And they'd go off to school. And I used to let them go round the corner. When they got out of sight of my eyesight from the window, I'd leave my front door and stand on the corner and watch them walk up that road. Right? But then I also knew a friend of mine was also, we have these, what they call the crossing ladies, where they, they go up to schools and they stop the traffic so the kids, children can cross the road. I knew my friend was a crossing lady. Right, so I knew from the moment I lost sight of her, it would be a matter of five minutes, if that, before she got inside to my friend. And my friend was watching for her to come up to the corner of the other road. And she texted me after, work, after all the kids got in school. She goes, Dee got in school okay. You know what I mean? So she's only out of sight, of my sight, for a matter of what? Three, four minutes before my friend saw her. I know three, four minutes is a long time and anything could happen. But I still picked her up on the night time after school. I still went up and picked her up every night after school. So I'm sorry if if my daughter had to walk that far where she needed to get to where a neighbor gave her a bike to get to the bus stop. I'd be walking there or driving her to school myself. And I know that sounds petty. And I know that sounds disgusting to people. But that, that's where she... Hold on, go back a bit. What do your feet hurt? Like just random things that normal kids wouldn't see. And... And she just helped me, you know. Grandma, your feet hurt? Well, let me massage your feet. And I know that sounds petty. And I know that sounds disgusting to people. But that's who she was. She didn't care. She wanted to help. But I think my favorite memory, honestly, though, was when she was younger, she had dropped a piece of banana on the floor. And the shoes I was wearing didn't have any kind of action and I fell Sorry, down the stairs idea. from it and years later she'd be like don't trip on a banana she just had that sense of humor she took something that that was an accident and ended up with you know a minor injury and just made it into a joke because she was just that kid she could take the worst of something and make you smile. And my my favorite memory was how... I'm sorry, but you slipped on a piece of banana and you accepted that and you let it go as a joke afterwards. I doubt it, love. I bet you went, in, went absolutely ache crap on her.
how she loved the people around her. Her aunt, our daughter Julie, went to Japan for a year as an exchange student in high school about five years ago. And when we went to the airport to pick her up, forget about the barriers and you're not supposed to go across this line. When she saw her Auntie Julie walking down the, the pathway to us, covered in her luggage, and she would bust down the barricade, run up, jump, and would not let go. I mean, that's how much her aunt and missed her. That was, that was pure Audrey. And has it settled in that she's no, no longer here? Is it still? I keep waiting for her to come through the door. I keep hoping it's a miss that somebody didn't identify her right or anything. So you still hope she you still keep thinking she's gonna walk through that door or hoping she's gonna walk through that door. Sweetheart. Granny, Granga, Grandma, whatever they call you. I've got a few other Pacific words I'd like to call you, but I can't. Right? It's too late now. I will go back on this again and again and again you admitted it yourself you let that piece of crap stay in uh, a caravan or whatever uh, whatever on your property who coming and out of your home and i can tell you now He'd been abusing that girl before. Because he was Audrey's favourite person. Did you know that? Did you know that? Your granddaughter, he was her favourite person. Because he was manipulating her. He was grooming her. He was SAing her. And you let it happen. So don't come all this fearful crocodile fucking fucking tears. I nearly said it then. Oh my lord, this is a magnet getting the piece. Oh, but I know I can't get it back. But I still wake up in the mornings. Wake, I wake up hoping this is a bad dream and she's going to come run to me and hug me. But I know it can't happen. I miss her so much. If you could talk to her. Bad dream. She'd been living with a monster. You know the monster we say uh, some parents used to say to the kids when I grew up, there's monsters under your bed. It was scared me so much that even now, I won't let my legs go off the side of the bed. As soon as my foot goes off the side of the bed, I'm pulling it back on. I literally wake up to pull my foot back on. Because I'm still got that fear there's monsters under my bed. She was living with that monster. I've got no pity for you. I don't feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for Audrey. I feel sorry for her mother. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I'm getting a bit irritated. Yes, yeah, I do, MG. I'm just getting a bit overheated. And this is why I couldn't watch it all. Because if I was kind of watching it on my TV, I think my TV would have been in bits on the floor. Let's continue. For one more time. What would you say to her? 
I could talk to her one more time. I'd never let go. How about saying, sweetheart, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I let that monster into your home. How about saying something like that? I tell her how much I love her. How much the family loves her. And how sorry I am. That I wasn't able to protect her. Look. Oh, so you're sorry now. Good one. Thank you. That I couldn't see that the devil was led into our house. And I beg for her forgiveness. I would tell her to. I wouldn't give. If, if I'd been Audrey, what if she had come to you and said, Look, this man is, is, he keeps touching me, he keeps messing with me, he's doing all this to me. Would you do something then? Or would you just totally go, No, he's not. Don't be silly. And brush it under the carpet. Because I could see that happening. I could have seen that happening. Because you didn't do the checks to protect your own flesh. Wow. Yeah, yeah, flesh and blood. Don't sit there with your tears, sweetheart. They don't work with me. And if there's any sympathizers who see this, then good. Because you know now, I've got no sympathy for people like this. Watch over us. Watch over for this family. I mean, I truly believe she's up there looking down on us. And you can see her grandma needs her support. Uh, grandma doesn't need her support. Your granddaughter needed the support. Not grandma. Grandma was the one who let the monster into the home. When will you actually stick up for this child? When will you actually stand up for this poor, innocent, beautiful child? Because I've got no words for any of you. And the whole world needs her love. And if she can continue to be that symbol of love, that's what I would like to like for her to do is is keep that going. No, I heard to know I never give up. I'm never gonna give up until nobody will do this again. Until we get that law changed. Or And I wish it was there ahead of time. My dying breath, I will see this. Because I protect her. But I'm darned if I don't protect somebody else's child. Your dying breath. Your dying breath. You've had your life. You've lived your life. Oh my lord. I'm getting so mad. This is why I didn't want to do this because. I don't want to get mad like this, but these people are getting me so mad. That's why I couldn't watch it all. I think I got to about four minutes of it on TV, and that's when I had to walk away. I'm only doing it now because of that one woman who said, well, there's reasons behind it, and the truth, the truth will come out. Well, tell us what the reasons are. Why you let this monster in your home but you wouldn't let your granddaughter see her mother the country knows audrey cunningham's name do you want her name to stand for more than just this terrible situation and stand for change stand for a law yeah i mean we're going forward 
um, to honor the name of Audrey Cunningham. Oh, I'll go. I'll go. We're going to start a foundation I'll go. and nonprofit. Everything will go to. No, no, no. Stop there. Enough. Enough of this BS. Enough. I'm glad something is coming out of her name. Something good. But we don't need children to die for for what should have already been in place. I know it wasn't their fault, that law, that he manipulated the law. I know that. And I know what they're going to say is they're going to bring out a law in Audrey's name. I don't want a name in Audrey's name. I want Audrey alive, but we can't have that. So I suppose the next best thing is to have Audrey's law. And as I've seen on one YouTube this morning, he was talking about this video. And um, he said, uh, this law should be across the whole country not just in their state it should be across the whole flipping country we're losing too many young children because of people like this not protecting them the police have admitted they dropped the ball they've admitted to that I've got paperwork on my laptop to show how they dropped the ball. Helping to promote Audrey's law and to, and to help organizations that help children that have suffered through senseless violence. A lot of organizations out there. Uh, Crime Stoppers have been working closely with them for many years. And if we can lend Audrey's name to that cause, that honors her life and, and what happened. Could you imagine what sort of life she would have had if you hadn't let that monster in your home? We wouldn't be having Audrey's law. There'd probably be other children under their names having it. But I can guarantee you there's parents out there who've lost children. Right? And they're not asking for laws under their children's names. They're not. I know one mother who isn't looking to put her son's name to a law. Right? But isn't it funny, all these parents uh, who've had someone go missing and get found, right? Yeah, I've got all those details, yeah, right? And um, they are fully back in the police and everything. They're not asking for the names, but you people who, who who just want to blame the police and blame the laws of your country, you're the ones who come out and say, well, uh, we're going to put a name to a law. We don't want a name to a law. We wanted her. But let's just have this law when you get put through will help and that that's mainly what we want to do going forward is to, to honor audrey cunningham our little angel that's what she'd want i know she loves seeing all the love that's being dispersed but the problem is there's so many people that are also spreading hate they don't realize my granddaughter, if she was here and heard these things and saw... Hate! Hate! Woman, you don't even know the hate I've got in me for you lot. You don't. 
I could be a lot worse than what I am, but I'm having to, I can't be Nancy Grace and say what I really want to say because this video wouldn't be released. So hate? No. You don't know the meaning of hate from me or from any of these YouTubers that see how what you are saying is BS. All those type of things that it would destroy her. So you destroyed her. You destroyed her. You. Rather than holding her up, they'd rather destroy somebody. Especially that little girl. I want her memory to be of the love she was. I'd rather have her here. I would not rather have a memory of her. I'd rather have her here, living her life to full. But you let her go. I'm glad in a way that you've admitted it. In between all the other BS that come out your mouth. Of the love she still is. And not, not diminish who she was as a person. Oh. Right, that was the end of it. Yeah, that was only 11 minutes long, but it took a lot longer than 11 minutes. Oh, God. It took about 45 minutes. But this is why I didn't want to do that, because I hate hearing the BS come out of parents' mouth. I hate hearing them blame the law. Yes, the, the laws are all fucked up, even in the UK. And I'm getting fed up of young children dying and then having laws put after their name. These laws should be in place. We should not be losing young children in the first place. Exactly. 2007 case, you can still get them, right? But I've got the... Um, Files. Oh no, I'll see if I can pull them up. Can we mark download somewhere? Uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Oh, where is it? Is this it? I don't know. Oh, I'm done. That's my door. Be right back. Flipping door. I'm back. Well, uh, is this the one? Is this the uh, thing I'm on about? Uh, oh, this was his. This is the best record. Yeah, that is a rest record from right, but I've got another one somewhere and I've got to find it because it's about right it is actually about um the case that happened the year before where he assaulted someone, badly assaulted him and 
when they went to the police about it, they told them who it was. And then the police come back and showed them some showed them this picture of this other guy. And they said, this is the wordings they use. Something like, do you know this guy? Well, obviously, they knew the guy in the photo. So they said, yeah, we know him. Right? What they didn't ask was, is this the guy who assaulted you? Because if they'd have asked him that, he just said, yes. That's the guy who assaulted you. No. If they'd have said, is this the guy who assaulted you? He'd have gone, no. That is not the guy. I've told you. It's McDougal. But they was adamant it was this other guy. In the end, the case got dropped. And um, I remember I like him as well. He's savage, yeah, he is. <laughs> right? He does stand from your think. But isn't he Polk County? The same as where the other chief was from, Polk County. Or was that the chef who's talking? Was he just the chef and is the, uh, the actual police? I don't know. Anyway, so because of that, the case got dropped. They went back and picked Stephen McDougall, the freak, out of a picture thing, right? Oh, right, okay. Right. And um, they still did not arrest him. Now, if they had done their job and arrested him, he could have been in prison. He would have been in prison and away from our beautiful Audrey. But they admit it. They admit they dropped the ball. I'm going to see if I can find it because it's doing my head in. I know I had it because I thought, oh, that ain't the one I wanted. No. Oh, is this it? Here it is. Yeah, this is it. This is about the case. That happened the year before, right? Polk County Sheriff's Office, right? Victim David Stanley, aggravated assault with deadly weapon, right? Now that would have sent him down for a few years at least. I don't know how long, unless he re dug it out to a misdemeanor. Report today, August the 19th, 2023, to Polk County Sheriff's Office at 4.09 a.m. Responding, Depu Deputy Shania Wood. At, hold on, I'm going to take this off. All right, let's see if I can go in a bit. No. All right. Yeah, is it showing? Lovely. At approximately 4.25 a.m., Deputy Wood responded to the location of where David Stanley was with EMS away from the home. At approximately 5.03 a.m., Deputy Wood's response to the Stanley home for viewing and attempted viewing location where stabbing took place. No evidence located. Uh, the evidence is on the body. Uh, evidence is on the body who's at e EM. Where was he? Who was with the EMS? You know what I mean? August the 19th, 2020. David Stanley arrives home from hospital. Meet with Deputy Kate Newman at residence and crime scene. Deputy Newman discovered a flashlight at scene that maybe actors left slash lost. Actors, what actors? Anyway, August 19, 2023. 
Deputy K. Newman received written statements from Stanley and Sewell, which were given to them via Deputy Wood to fill out. Detective, Detective Ethan Plapper received the case file on August 21st, 2023, after being signed by Deputy Lieutenant David Mitchell. August 21st, 23. Unknown time. I'm sure if the police were involved, the police would know the time. David Stanley meets with Deputy Detective Plaka at Sheriff's Office on case. Henry Reese identified as suspect by David Stanley. Provided to video statement. Latisha Sewell's girlfriend was presented at the time of the interview. David, now isn't that the other guy they had at the house? Henry Reese, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. David Stanley provides Detective Placker and Lieutenant Mitchell with pages of photos he received from Facebook of someone identifying Henry Reese as the actor in the scabbing. Okay. Detective Placker makes attempts in locating Henry Reese for interview, unable to locate. Right. August 21st, Placa issues a arrest warrant for Henry Reeves for offence of aggravated assault with deadly weapon and for offence of aggravated robbery. August 23rd. I think they got the date wrong there. It says 21. It should be 2023. Henry Reeves and Sussex were arrested on warrants. Detective Placa and interviewed who identified the male, why are they saying actor with her as Jeremy, who she does not know his last name. Detective Placker and Lieutenant Dean Mitchell interviews Henry Reese, who denies being involved or having any knowledge of the assault. Right? Placker on the 25th, Detective Placker talks with a gay, again. She then states she told Henry Reese about the assault and stated she stabbed David Stanley and then identifies John Stephen MacDougall as a known unmale, unknown male being at the scene. Right? August the 30th, Detective Placker meets again with Stanley. David Stanley and Letitia Sewell at Sheriff's Office interview room. Stanley still identifies Henry Rees as a scabbing actor. Detective Plata submits case on Rees and Sewell to District Attorney's Office for review. Transmittal received. December, September the 9th, Detective Plata received telephone call from David Stanley. Stanley states he attended a protective order hearing and seeing Henry Reese, and Reese was not the person who stabbed him. Right, sometimes a photo can be very deceiving. That's why I don't like having a photo ID. I don't think they do any justice. Right. Stanley states everyone was pushing that it was Reese. Stanley then states Stephen McDougall. Captain. This was in September the 9th, 2023. Same date, September 9th, Detective Plackerson consulted with First Assistant DA Tammy Pierce on case, advised to interview David Stanley again. Detective Plackerson meets David Stanley again at the Sheriff's Office, went over the story again, submits supplementary report to DA's office to put the original case file at DI office. Polk County DI office enters case file into system into the office reference to Henry Rees and some case. November 28th, Detective Lieutenant Craig Finnegan contacted by Sheriff Lawrence to investigate the case. Oh, he's here, phone's hurt my ears. Investigate this case, investigating after being contacted by David Stanley. Right? Uh, 
Detective Lieutenant attends to be in to you, jail inmate Stephen McDougal. See, he's in jail there. Stephen McDougal on the case. Dougal refuses to talk. November the 30th, Detective Lieutenant Finnegan attempts telephone contact with David Stanley, leaving a voicemail. Now, I'm sorry. You need to get in touch with someone. You get in your car and drive to their home. If you can't get them on the phone, get in your car, drive to their home. Detective Lieutenant Finnegan meets with David Stanley, David Stanley at the Sheriff's Office conducting a video interview for information. Talked about the ident that he identified Henry Reese out of a Facebook photo. Facebook photo, they shouldn't even be used for ID. Facebook as a person who stabbed him. Detective Plackett talked to you several times after that and Detective Mitchell showed him a photo and asked if that was Henry Rees and he said yes it was. Yes because he knew Henry, Henry Rees. So he's going to say yes that's Henry Rees. Stanley responded they did not ask if that was the guy that stabbed me. That's the thing here. Yeah. Right? Mitchell showed him the photograph. Hold on. That works. Mitchell showed him a photo and asked if that was Henry Reed. Well, people could show me a photo and say, is that such and such? And I'll go, yeah. You know what I mean? But if they said, is that such and such? Is that the one who attacked you? I'll go, no. Two different questions. Right? Stanley responded they did not ask if that was the guy that stabbed him. Talking about later in the investigation, he sees a photo of a book in photo of Stephen McDougal that he sees on the internet and says, says that, that McDougal stabbed him. David Stanley requested that attempted murder charges be filed against the following. Henry Rees and Stephen McDonald. The reasoning was that it takes three people to conspire to commit murder. He said that Henry Reeves should have known that such and such was out with Stephen McDougall. So there are three people. Stanley advised that due to him picking out the wrong person as the actor, I don't know why I refer as an actor, by a photo online and then picking another person out by an online photo. Along with giving different stories as to who was involved, that I will not be issuing an arrest warrant, but will be forwarding the case to the Polk County DA office for review. Oh God, all oh, nearly finished. Detective February the 8th, Detective Lieutenant Finnegan submits all supplemental information as to possibly Stephen McGougal being involved in the assault to Polk County DA office. For review and grand jury if needed. Polk County Grand Jury Assemble. Case in question was not presented. They didn't even put it in front of a grand jury. Polk County DA office set up file system for Don Stephen McDougal case. During the Capital Murder investigation, the investigation on this day, with Stephen McDougall as defendant, McDougall made statements to Texas Rangers during the interview. Listen to this. Listen to this. During the capital murder investigation on this day, with Stephen McDougall as defendant, McDougall made statements to Texas Rangers during interview interview that he did stab David Scanley. A rest warrant was issued for aggravated assault with deadly weapon in the David Stanley criminal investigation. That's what he was first arrested for, because he admitted to that stabbing when he was being questioned about something else. So he probably thought, oh, I'll admit to that stabbing, you know what I mean? Now leave me alone then. Yeah, okay, I'll probably go to prison for a few years, but you know what I mean? But oh no, 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 didn't work, did it? Did 
I thought it was Paul, I, I knew it was Paul County because I thought, oh, well, I like that show, that show. He goes down from nothing. Why can't we have people like that over here? Because over here, our police are put down by the government that we've had for doing so much. You leave my biscuits alone. My cat's trying to eat my cookies. <laughs> right. But, um, so if they uh, literally listen to him in the first place, when you first say, because show someone a photo from Facebook, and then you're getting it in the hair, ear by someone, yeah, it's such and such that he, he stabbed you. You're going to say, yes, but as he said, they asked him if that was that such and such, and he said, yes. They didn't ask him if he was the one who stabbed, assaulted him. If they'd have asked him that question, he just said no. So they dropped a very big ball. At least they own up to it. At least they own up to it. Where I, those two, talking about their granddaughter. Like, who on earth let an 11 year old loose with a tattoo needle? I'm an adult. Come on. Perhaps when they're like 16, maybe, and then it would have to be of a woman. If it was a girl doing it, I'd, I'd have to say, if I was a girl, I'd say, yeah, you can do a tattoo on me, do it on my arm. But that tattoo she was doing looked like a leg or something. Whose body was she putting that tattoo on? I hope to God it wasn't that vile creature, because now he's got a tattoo on him, reminding him every day what she was like. You know what I mean? And I think that day he was setting the mother up because he arranged to me. He was arranging to meet the mother after school. Now, if she'd have gone to that pickup point, that meeting place, her phone would have been pinging, right? So then, when her daughter didn't show up, she'd have gone home thinking, "Okay, it's not happening. This meeting ain't happening," and she'd have gone home. Or did he plan to meet the mother there as well at the same place as where he put Audrey? Get rid of the mother as well, so that when it comes down to Audrey going missing, they'd have found out, oh god, her mum's missing as well. They'd have been looking for a mother and daughter all over the states who wasn't even alive. They would never have found Audrey's body if they hadn't lowered the water. Team from the uh, group that found her, Exorcists, they are brilliant, right? He said he's seen her swirling around in the, in the currents. That was... And you know, her mother only found out about uh, her undergarments, her pants being found on the riverside from that interview that Nancy Grace did with Tim. Tim Mullins, is he? Whatever his name is, Tim. Right? How is that? That mother, she never been uh, found out that way. Never. Yeah, but it was either he was going to set the mother up because don't forget he was messaging her and she knocked him back. She told him what he was saying was disgusting and all this lot. Remember, if you've seen them text messages? And I think that was the night, two nights before, right? And then the night before she went missing, he was texting her again and arranging, making, trying to make arrangements for her to see her daughter after school. So I think he killed her out of malice, right? He killed that little girl out of malice because the mother knocked him back. 
because he said, I'll give you my truck and the deeds to my truck for one hour to rock your world. Right? And the mother told him it's disgusting. Right? And then when his phone messaged him like that, later, a little while later, he was trying to rant and she said, uh, these text messages were coming back and forth. And her boyfriend said, do not meet up. Do not. Her boyfriend, her partner, the mother's partner, was even trying to get in touch with Audrey's father to let him know about Stephen McDougall. Right? Now, the father, from what I heard, had a phone, a text message or a phone call from the school while he's at work at 1 p.m. in the afternoon, telling him his daughter was not in school. Why the hell did he not get on the phone and say to the, his parents, Why is Audrey not in school? Where's Audrey? You know what I mean? I've just had a phone call saying she's not in school. Where is she? The mother even said, when they got to, uh, to speak, when, the, when they got the grandmother to speak to her, as soon as she mentioned Stephen McDougall, the grandmother kind of like, kind of like uh, 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 I've got to go, I've got to go, pushed it off. As soon as the grandmother heard Stephen McDougall was the one who took her to school, she had to leave. She had to get off that phone. So don't come in with your tears because you know what? We don't fall for it. We don't believe these tears. Right? I don't. I, I, I feel sorry for the mother because she's now lost her daughter. I feel sorry for your grandson who I believe was Audrey's uh, aunt, is it beyond? Oh, cousin, cousin. He's lost a cousin, and I, and you are still looking after this grandson. Really, I hope not. I hope to God the mother is like, no, no, it's all right, I find, you know what I mean? I know childcare is, is expensive. Right? But the grandmother works. So who's looking after the grandkids then if she's working? They just get me so mad. Now I've done many videos and I've been very calm and very diplomatic about it all. Right? But I couldn't hold myself on that one. Mainly, I wasn't going to do it. But it's mainly because of that woman coming back in the chat of this video that we see and say, you don't know the full truth. The truth will come out. And I said, well, give us the shortened version. Let us know. Tell us. You know what I mean? She never got back to me. In fact, I'll check. No, nothing in my inbox. Look. Nothing. Nothing's in my inbox. Nothing. So, we we'll go back to him. We like him. We like him. But he's coming up to retirement, I believe. He's got to be coming up to retirement. I'm sure I watched a video, one of his videos and he said something about his age. <laughs> Eggs, they could be real, yeah. But they're not for Audrey. No, no. Come on, would you let? If you're MJ, your man, right? And your partner come on and say, oh, I know this guy, he's homeless. He's been in prison, he's had a rough time. Could we let him stay here for a while? We've got this caravan out the back, he can live in there. Would you let him, your husband let you do that? 
Would you agree? To, would you agree to that, or would it be a how no? Because if I had young children on my property, I wouldn't have let that ever lad like stay in my house. What are you up to? What are you up to? What did you do? Oh, God, so. No, don't jump over me. My cat's about to go flying past, past my leg. And at least it's skim across my face as I'm on, on my laptop. Chasing each other around their room. Right. But it'd be a hell no. Exactly. Mm. Anyone with any common sense would get let a criminal. Even if it had nothing to do with children, I wouldn't let no criminal into my onto my property. Especially into my home. I know they need somewhere to live. But don't they have these halfway houses these sort of thing? They could go and leave me. <laughs> well, all my family, apart from my son and daughter, the rest of my family all day in Birmingham. Birmingham. And um, I come from a large family, so and I only speak to the one member of my family. <laughs> There's seven of us all together, but I only speak to one of them. So, but how long have you had my family, apart from my one member of my family, to stay here? She could stay here all the time. But the rest of my family, apart from my son, daughter, and my sister, we take a hike. I wouldn't have them in my house. Even if they come up and say, we're well, just coming to read on uh, food, food there. Could you stop at yours? And I'll go, well, I'll tell you what, there's a B&B &B here and there's motels here, there's hotels there. Use one of them. You know what I mean? Or I might give you a sleeping bag to use in your car. But how on no would I let anyone stay in my house now? That's what I was saying the other night. I think we may have scared Brian off because I was saying, if any man was to come into my life now, I'd be, I'd be vetting him. I'd be doing cross checks, record checks, you name it. I'd be ripping Google apart to find the information on this guy. So I do feel sorry for men from, from a woman's point of view because anyone who does YouTube, right, is on YouTube or on Twitter and follow these sort of cases or on Facebook and follow these cases, they are becoming more aware of their surroundings now. Yeah. I'd be the same, I'm the same. I only let my sister and her son, my nephew, because they come up here a few years ago for my son's wedding. And it was the last minute thing that was coming up. So they came up and I said, yeah, you can stay at mine. Don't, no, no, don't. Told you I've got a spare bed. Right? Well, actually, I had, when anyone stays at mine, I'm very gracious. Even when my son or my daughter stay at mine. I let them have my bed and I tend to go into the kids' bedroom or I sleep on my second bed, which is my sofa. I'm quite happy to give my bed up to certain members of my family. Right? But otherwise, the rest of my family can take a leap off a high cliff into the nearest ocean. So, but you know, even men to get a men. They're just cautious as well. They've got to be cautious about having women in their home, especially if they've got young children. You hear my cat in the background? It's in my head for some reason. But if everyone has got to be so cautious nowadays. Hold on, hold on. Right, everyone's got to be so careful. You've got to know who you're having in your home. God, I'm, 
I'm 57, and when I was uh, 50 years ago, you didn't open your home up to anyone. You didn't. We didn't have sleepovers. Right? When I had children, it was a new thing. They sleep I thought sleepovers. Oh, letting someone else's child sleep in my home. Right? Now, I remember my son's first saying, can I stay at my friend's house tonight, Mum? I went, hmm. I knew her mum, I knew the dad, right? And I'll tell you what, because I was very cautious about my kids, your friend can stay at my house tonight, right? So that's what they did. <laughs> oh no, mine, mine get up with me in the morning, <coughs> they go crazy. For about an hour in the morning, an hour or so. <coughs> then they normally crash out on my bed till about five, six o'clock. Really, they crash out all afternoon then on my bed. And I don't know why they're not doing it now. Because at the moment they're teasing each other. Anyway, get off that. And, um, I wouldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't have anyone, no, not with my grandkids. Because a lot, as I said, my one grandson is on, a, is on a spectrum of autism. My other grandson is highly maintenance, is 24 7. Right? He does have moments in the day where he goes off on his quiet moments where he likes to be on his own. So we do get about an hour or so every so often where he kind of runs out of battery life and just chills out. But otherwise, he's on the go 24-7. And I can't see any man coming in my life putting up with something like that. And if you can't put up with my grandchildren, then you can't put up with me. Simple as that. But... Oh God, I couldn't know. If you were single, MG, if you were single, would you have would you be here like that? I'd be vetting everyone that book. Got up to go and went to the shops. I went to the shops for the top first time in a week. But I haven't been out all week. I don't go out very often. And I went to the shops and this guy was talking to me. And I was going, Yeah, yeah, right, okay, okay, that's that thanks. You know what I mean? Try to be polite. But getting the hell away from this man as quick, quick as I could. I thought, I know he's only being polite and trying to be helpful. But, no, no, stay away from me. Don't come near me. And I couldn't get my shopping put on that checkout quick enough to get out the store. So, no. No man in my life. I don't want one. I've got my cat and I'm happy. I've, well, I've got two men in my life. Well, three. I've got my son. I've got my two grandsons. That's all I need. I've got my daughter's partner, Ryan. He's in my life. If you count him as in my life. Because he's, he's my daughter's partner. So, yeah. <laughs> I'll die single. Exactly. But you see, my, my kids, my grandkids, my grandson, my daughter's little boy, he has got a granddad, right? He has got a grand, he got, he's got a granddad, but he hasn't got a granddad from my side because my husband, my son and daughter's father, passed away, 2009, right? So we talk about him to them. They know who he is, but... My other grandson, Ellis and Olivia, both on my side and on her mum's side, the grandfathers have both died. Yeah, you know what I mean? So my my grandson and granddaughter don't have any grandfathers. The only men in their life is the dad. So, 
um, but they know about the granddad. But you see, I had to laugh once because my son is a spitting image of his dad. And one day, my son was here with his wife, and I think my grandson was what about three, four. He come running out of the bedroom, right? And he's screaming. So we've shut up thinking, what the hell has gone on? And he's gone, he's gone, Daddy ghost, Daddy ghost. I'm thinking, what's it? And then his dad's coming and he said, Ellis, I'm here. I'm okay, I'm here. And he goes, no, Daddy ghost, Daddy ghost. Right? And what it was, it actually see my, their, their dad. Right? So don't tell me ghosts don't exist, because they do. They do. Right? And he's actually seen the ghost of his grandfather. And because he's so like his dad, he come running out of the room saying, Daddy ghost, because he thought it was his dad. That's how weird it is. And even now, like, he was talking about, he had this thing, where he, what was that name? He, he kept calling it this woman by a certain name, referring to a woman. I was going, no, don't know anyone with that name. No one in my family with that name. Right? Now, where I live, years and years, many moons ago, there's a train bridge that collapsed. Right? And a lot of people died. Right? While I was building it, it collapsed. And a lot of workers died. And he kept coming up with this one name, I can't think what name it was now. And he even said to his teacher one day, sorry I'm late, but such and such kept me talking. So they asked me if I knew anyone of that name. I said, no. We found out that the flats where they live in were built in the era of the when the train bridge was being built so we believe the woman he was referring to was someone who lived in that flat right because they were flats then not as nice as they are now but they were flats and um we believe the woman he was talking to was someone who was related to someone who worked on the bridge because those flats were, were around when that bridge was being built. So my grandson picks up on all the spirits, he really does, picks up on them all. So, spooky. But that was it, I used to say to my kids, I said, like, you and dad are splitting up if we had an argument. I said, me and your dad are here together forever. But to be honest with you, we, we weren't together forever. We did split up eventually. Hold on, I'm just about to kill my cats. Move. Oh. And we did split up eventually, but it was inevitable. It was going to happen. But no, um, I will never have another man in my life now. I'm happy as I am. I get to do what I want to do, you know what I mean? Get to do what I want to do, go out when I want to go out, eat when I want to eat. Go to bed when I want to go to bed, get up when I want to get up. I answer to no one but myself. But come on, ladies, please vet the men before you take them in. Grandparents, please, before you give a room up to anyone, Go to the police if you can't get it online and ask them. They can't tell you outright what the charges are, but they can advise you on the on the best thing to do. And to be honest with you, they might be thankful because you might be reporting someone who they who they are actually looking for. You know what I mean? So if you go and say, Well, I've got this guy such and such and he's homeless. And we just want to know if it's safe to, if it'd be safe to have him in our home. And you tell them the guy, they'll be going, mm, no. But then 
you might tell me I'm someone who they are looking for. And they go, you know what, thank you for that. Don't have him in your don't have him in your home. Be on the safe side, don't have strangers in your home. So anyway, I've got to go because I'm back on again later. And I've got to have something to eat. But I only did that video because of those that one woman who kept commenting. And as you probably heard in my commentary, how angry I was. And how much hate I had for people like that. And believe me, she's not the only one. I am now looking at um, Madeline Soto's mother. She's the next one on my list. She's the next one. Oh, and the mother to Sebastian. I'm not so bad for her. I, for the stepfather yet, but for her, no. I don't know. I don't know what's going on in that household. But what's her name? Madeline was it? Yeah, Madeline Soto, her mother knew. She knew. Anyway, I'm going to go. I'm going to calm down, have a nice big cup of coffee, something to eat, and I'll see you all again later. So thank you for being here with me. Thank you, MG, for showing up again as usual. And I'll see you all soon. Bye.